Solar eclipse. Yes. yes. Okay. So we've got this solar eclipse happening this weekend. Uh, everywhere in the United States or the contiguous United States could see this. Okay. Weather permitting, that's the big thing. I'll talk about that in just a second. So here's a map of everywhere across the U.S. that will be able to see this eclipse. Everywhere except for where it says the path of annular eclipse, it'll just be a partial eclipse. But from Oregon down to Texas, it will be this annular eclipse, which is not the total eclipse that we had back in 2017 or what we'll see again next year. Annular total. What is the difference with this? It's actually really interesting. Obviously, to have an eclipse, you have to have the sun. And in addition to the sun, you need to have the earth. And there's three parts of the eclipse. The third part, right there, the moon. You need to have the moon move in between the sun and the earth. So, what makes these two different types of eclipses? Well, the moon's orbit around the earth is not a perfect circle. It is a ellipse. And because it's an ellipse, at certain points in its orbit, it is either closer or farther away. When you have a solar eclipse, when the moon moves in between the Earth and the sun, for a total eclipse, that's when the moon is at perigee. That means it's closer to the Earth, but when the moon is farther away from the Earth during a solar eclipse, that is when you get an annular solar eclipse. We call this point apogee, when the moon is at its farthest point away from the Earth. And when that occurs, which is what will occur tomorrow, you don't get that perfect coverage of the sun. You get what we call an annulus. The moon produces a ring that you see around the sun, and that is why we call it an annular eclipse, because it creates an annulus or that ring of fire, which is what this is called. Now, next year, the total solar eclipse is a lot more rare. That occurs on April 8th, 2024. But again, it's all weather dependent, right? You got to have clear skies. Tomorrow, we probably won't have clear skies. So this is what it would look like here in the Philadelphia area if we had clear skies. That moon moves in front of the sun. It would cover about 25% of the sun. You'd have to look at it with special glasses to be able to see it. You never look at the sun, but that's what it looked like if you did have those special protective glasses. That'll happen around 121 in the afternoon, and then the moon will move on, and then it will move out of the way of the sun. Again, something that we'll be looking for. We just unfortunately probably won't be able to see it because of this right here, this area of low pressure producing widespread rain and a whole lot of cloud cover that's going to come with it. Let me walk you through the next 36 hours here because, again, we'll see that increasing cloud cover as we go through tomorrow morning. Showers begin to arrive as we head through sunrise, more likely out to the west at first, and then we'll likely see them spread across the entire region as we head through around eclipse time.